Hey, welcome back. Michael, KC9PHK, here for 5.9 Radio, presenting you with the 2022-2026 to Technician Class Amateur Radio Question Pool. If you're just joining us for the first time, you want to make sure you go back and hit some of the other sub-elements. You'll want to see the entire question pool before you even attempt at your Amateur Radio Technician Class License test examination uh, be sure that you're subscribed so you're aware of any additional videos we release make sure you give it a thumbs up if you find this video informational and helpful make sure you turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified when we release new videos let's jump right in sub element T6 covers electronic and electronic or electrical components. Four exam questions come from the four groups inside of sub-element T6. T6A covers fixed and variable resistors, capacitors, inductors, fuses, switches, and batteries. T6A01, what electrical component opposes the flow of current in a DC circuit? And that is B, resistor. T6A02, what type of component is often used as an adjustable volume control? That is a potentiometer. T6A03, what electrical parameter is controlled by a potentiometer? That is resistance. T6A04, what electrical component stores energy in an electric field? That is a capacitor. T6A05, what type of electrical component consists of conductive surfaces separated by an insulator? That is a capacitor. T6A06, what type of, of electrical component stores energy in a magnetic field? That is an inductor. Inductor. T6A07, what electrical component is typically constructed as a coil of wire? That's an inductor as well. T6A08, what is the function of an SPDT switch? That is, a single circuit is switched between one or two other circuits. T6A09, what electrical component is used to protect other circuit components from current overloads? Fuse. T6A10, which of the following battery chemistries is rechargeable? And that is all of the above. So nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, and lead acid. T6A11, which of the following battery chemistries is not rechargeable? That is carbon zinc. Carbon zinc. T6A12, which type of switch is represented by component 3 in figure T2? That answer is single pole, single throw. T6B covers semiconductors, basic principles and applications of solid state devices, diodes, and transistors. T6B01, which is true about forward voltage drop in a diode? A. It is lower in some diode types than in others. T6B02. What electrical component current? What electronic component allows current to flow in only one direction? That is a diode. T6B03. Which of these components can be used as an electronic switch? A transistor. T6B04. Which of the following components can consist of three regions of semiconductor material? That is a transistor. T6B05. What type of transistor has a gate, drain, and source? That is a field effect. Field effect. T6B06. How is the cathode lead of a semiconductor diode often marked on the package? B. With a stripe. T6B07, what causes a light-emitting diode, also called an LED, to emit light? Forward DC current. T6B08, what does the abbreviation FET stand for? That is a field effect transistor. T6B09, what are the names for the electrodes of a diode? Anode and cathode. T6B10, which of the following can provide power gain? 
transistor. T6B12, what are the names of the electrodes of a bipolar junction transistor? Emitter, base, and collector. Emitter, base, and collector. T6C covers circuit diagrams, use of schematics, basic structures, schematic symbols of basic components. T6C01, what is the name of an electrical wiring diagram that uses standard component symbols? That is a schematic. T6C02, what is component 1 in figure T1? That would be a resistor. T6C03, which, what is a component 2 in figure T1? That is a transistor. T6C04, what is component 3 in figure T1? And that would be a lamp. Lamp. T6C05, what is component 4 in figure T1? And that would be the battery. T6C06, what is component 6 in figure T2? That is a capacitor. T6C07, what is component 8 in figure T2? Component 8 is a, is a light emitting diode. T6C08, what is component 9 in figure T2? Variable resistor. Variable resistor. T6C09, what is component 4 in figure T2? Transformer. T6C10, what is component 3 in figure T3? That is a variable inductor. Variable inductor. All right, T6C11, what is component 4 in figure T3? That is the antenna. Antenna. T6C12 says, which of the following is accurately represented in electrical schematics? And the answer is component connections. T6D covers component functions, rectifiers, relays, voltage regulators, meters, indicators, integrated circuits, transformers, resonant circuit, and shielding. T6D01 says, which of the following devices or circuits changes an alternating current into varying direct current signal? That answer is a rectifier. T6D02, what is a relay? Relay is an electrically controlled switch. T6D03, which of the following is a reason to use shielded wire? To prevent coupling of unwanted signals to or from the wire. T6D04, which of the following displays an electrical quantity as a numerical value? That's a meter. T6D05, which type of circuit controls the amount of voltage from a power supply? That's a regulator. T6D06, which component changes 120 volts AC to a lower AC voltage for other uses? Transformer. T6D07, which of the following is commonly used as a visual indicator? LED. T6D08, which of the following is combined with an inductor to make a resonant circuit? A capacitor. T6D09, which is the name of a device that combines several semiconductors and other components into one package. That is an integrated circuit. T6D10, what is the function of component 2 in figure T1? It controls the flow of current. T6D11, which of the following is a resonant or tuned circuit? An inductor and a capacitor in series or parallel. Going on to sub-element T7, practical circuits. Another four exam questions come from the four groups located in sub-element T7. T7A covers station equipment, receivers, transceivers, transmitters, amplifiers, receive amplifiers, transverters, basic radio circuit concepts and terminology, sensitivity, selectivity, mixers, oscillators, PTT, and modulation. T7A01, what? term describes the ability of a receiver to detect the presence of a signal. That's sensitivity. T7A02, what is a transceiver? A transceiver is a device that combines a receiver and a transmitter. 
T7A03, which of the following is used to convert a signal from one frequency to another? It's a mixer. T7A04, which term describes the ability of a receiver to discriminate between multiple signals? Selectivity. T7A05, what is the name of a circuit that generates a signal at a specific frequency? Oscillator. T7A06, what device converts the RF input and output of a transceiver to another band? That's a transverter. T7A07, what is the function of a transceiver's PTT input? Switches the transceiver from receive to transmit when grounded. T7A08, which of the following describes combining speech with an RF carrier signal? That is modulation. T7A09, what is the function of single sideband CWFM switch on a VHF power amplifier? It sets the amplifier for proper operation in the selected mode. T7A10, what device increases the transmitted output power from a transceiver? As an RF power amplifier. T7A11, which, where is a RF preamplifier installed? between the antenna and the receiver. T7B uh, covers symptoms, causes, and cures of common transmitter and receiver problems, overload and overdrive, distortion, interference, and consumer electronics, and RF feedback. T7B01, what can you do if you're told your FM handheld or mobile transceiver is over-deviating? The answer is talk further away from the microphone. T7B02, what would cause a broadcast AM or FM radio to receive an amateur radio transmission unintentionally? The receiver is unable to reject strong signals outside the AM or FM band. T7B03, which of the following could cause radio frequency interference? And that correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct, so you're going to have fundamental overload, harmonics, and spurious emissions. T7B04, which of the following could you use to cure distorted audio caused by RF current on the shield of a microphone cable? And that answer is D, ferrite choke. T7B05 says, how can fundamental overload of a non-amateur radio or TV receiver by an amateur signal be reduced or eliminated? A, block the amateur signal with a filter at the antenna input of the affected receiver. T7B06, which of the following actions could you take if your neighbor tells you that your station's transmissions are interfering with their radio or TV reception? Answer is, make sure that your station is functioning properly and that it does not cause interference to your own radio or television when it is turned tuned to the same channel. T7B07, which of the following can reduce overload of a VHF transceiver by a nearby commercial FM station? That answer is installing a band reject filter. T7B08, what should you do if something in your neighbor's home is causing harmful interference to your amateur station? Answer is all of the above, which is work with your neighbor to identify the offending device. Politely inform your neighbor that the FCC rules prohibit the use of devices that cause interference. And then make sure your station meets the standards of good amateur practice. T7B09, what should the f be the first step to resolve non-fiber optic cable TV interference caused by your amateur radio transmission? D, be sure all TV feed line coaxial connectors are installed properly. T7B10, what might be a problem if you receive a report that your audio signal through an FM repeater is distorted or unintelligible? Your transmitter is slightly off frequency, your batteries are running low, you're in a bad location. All of those are correct. T7B11, what are the symptoms of RF feedback in a transmitter or receiver? And that is C, reports of garbled, distorted, or unintelligible voice transmissions. T7C covers antenna and transmission line measurements and troubleshooting. Measuring SWR, effects of high SWR, causes a feed line failure, basic coaxial cable characteristics, use of dummy loads when testing. T7C01, what is the primary purpose of a dummy load? 
to prevent transmitting signals over the air when making tests. T7C02, which of the following is used to determine if an antenna is resonant at the desired operating frequency? That is an antenna analyzer. T7C03, what does a dummy load consist of? That is a non-inductive resistor mounted on a heat sink. T7C04, what rating of an SWR meter indicates a perfect impedance match between the antenna and the feed line? That is a one-to-one. -one. T7C05, why do most solid-state transmitters reduce output power as SWR increases beyond a certain level? That's to protect the output amplifier transistors. T7C06, what does an SWR reading of four-to-one indicate? Impedance mismatch. Mix match, mismatch, impedance mismatch. T7C07, what happens to power lost in a feed line? It is converted into heat. T7C08, which instrument can be used to determine SWR? That is a directional watt meter. T7C09, which of the following causes failure of coaxial cables? That answer is moisture contamination. T7C10, why should the outer jacket of coaxial cable be resistant to ultraviolet light? Ultraviolet light can damage the jacket and allow water to enter the cable. T7C11, what is the disadvantage of air core coaxial cable when compared to foam or solid dielectric types? It requires special techniques to prevent moisture in the cable. T7D is using basic, basic test instruments, voltmeter, AM meter and ohm meter and soldering. T7D01, which instrument would you use to measure electric potential? A voltmeter. T7D02, how is a voltmeter connected to a component to measure applied voltage? In parallel. T7D03, when configured to measure current, how is a multimeter connected to a component? In series. T7D04, which instrument is used to measure electric current? That's an ammeter, ammeter. T7D05, question has been removed. The rest of the section has not been renumbered. T7D06, which is following, can damage a multimeter. That's attempting to measure voltage when using the resistance setting. T7D07, which of the following measurements are made using a multimeter? That is voltage and resistance. T7D08, which of the following types of solder should, be should not be used for radio and electronic applications? And that is acid core solder. T7D09, what is the characteristic appearance of a cold tin lead solder joint? That is a rough or lumpy surface. T7D10, what reading indicates an ohm meter is connected across a large discharge capacitor? A, increasing resistance with time. T7D11, which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring in-circuit resistance with an ohm meter? That is, ensure the circuit is not powered. And that will conclude this video covering T6 and T7 sub-elements of the amateur radio technician class question pool. Remember to thumbs up this video if you find it useful. Stick with us as we release the rest of them and keep studying and get up there and take your amateur radio license test. Hopefully you can get licensed. Thanks again from 5.9 Radio, KC9PHK out.